hello everybody and welcome to first book video of 2024 literally feels insane to be set in 2024 but i thought that i would share some of my five star reads well not some of my five star reads my five star reads of 2023 some of my favorite books of the year i have done a few videos talking about some of my favorite books already and like favorite series and everything but i did one of these last year and i thought that I would just do another video in like all of my five star reads together so that if you want to know what they are they're here for you so i have 14 books that are rated five stars but only three of them are standalones and the rest the other 11 are part of the series so you can probably guess what those ones are going to be so i do apologize that this is probably going to be a little bit repetitive if you've either watched any of my other videos or you follow me on any socials because these are the books that I like eat breathe sleep die loving I do think I'm quite picky with the five stars like there have been a lot of books that I've read this year that I've loved that have been really good but they just haven't gave me that five star feeling so just to quickly go through some stats of my 2023 reads so I read 113 books in total and I read 46,086 pages my story graph is actually not working so I'm having to use a mix of goodreads and myyearinbooks.com or something like that so it says that the minutes I read for was 74,324 minutes my top genres were romance, contemporary and fantasy. My top author was... How rude. My top author was Tara Maffey, I think is how you pronounce it, the author of the Shatter Me series. So anyways, we're just going to get on into it. I'm going to go in the order of how I read them actually, but that does mean that we're going to have a lot of the series to begin with, so I apologise. So starting off strong, or honestly, maybe not, we have six books from the Addicted series. Well, the Addicted Callaway Sister series, which honestly is probably a little bit ridiculous. This in general is like a five star, six star unmatched series for me. But these are the specific books in the series that I did for it are five stars. I won't talk about them too, too much because number one, I've absolutely exhausted this series on my channel. And number two, I don't know if you just want me to fully go in depth for six books out of a 10 book series because you're probably going to get some spoilers so basically the addicted Callaway sister series follows well the addicted series follows lily and law they are both addicts lily is a sex addict and law is an alcoholic they basically fake date they are like childhood best friends they fake date essentially to cover up each other's addictions from their family and friends and they enable each other they are very toxic and basically as their sort of addiction increases and their fake day in their fake relationship intensifies that's when their families get involved so that is when we see rose and daisy who are lily's sisters come into the story and then we get the sort of callaway sisters spin-off if you will so my first five stars of the series was kiss the sky which is rose and connor's first book rose and connor are like academic rivals they are both so incredibly intelligent they've gone to like prestigious schools they are both just like so unbelievably smart they have a love-hate relationship and you just kind of see them start to bond their relationships start to blossom and i love it they are just like the ultimate power couple then the next one that i had was hot house flower so this is daisy and reich's book i actually initially did not rate this a five stars because i'm not a big fan of age gap and i don't know something about it just didn't really sit right with me but like looking back i would give it a five stars because the only thing that in my opinion lets us down is the age gap but yeah so this basically follows reich who we see in the first few books and daisy who is lily and rose's youngest sister she is a model reich is i actually don't even know what reich's like profession is in these books actually he's like in college he's a runner he loves like climbing and adventure and all things like that but this kind of follows their friendship to begin with and just the way that Reich like showed up for Daisy all the time the whole like Paris part of this book was really what like sold me on them and I just loved it then we have Feel the Fire which is Rose and Connor's second book again I'm not going to talk too much about it but I just love them as a couple and I loved seeing more of them then the first book of Lillian Laws that I actually rated five stars was Addicted After All which is their last book I was a little bit of a Lillian Law hater to begin with well maybe not hater that's a bit harsh 
but I just didn't seem to love them as much as other people did because I felt like I couldn't fully get on board with their like toxicity and I felt like they weren't not that they weren't meant for each other but that they weren't good for each other my opinion obviously changed as the books went on and I just absolutely love them and I would protect them with like my heart and soul but this was the first book of theirs that I rated five stars this kind of rounds up their story and I just loved it and I don't know there's something about Lillian Law that really just gets me in my feels so this follows them still battling their addictions then progressing the relationship what the future might hold for them and I was just obsessed. Then the next one is Long Way Down. So this is technically Daisy and Reich's second book. And again, I feel like just the way that Daisy and Reich like show up for each other, their relationship and everything really just sold me on them. Like to the point that I kind of forgot about the age gap. But this is like technically the last of the Addicted Calloway series kind of, or following like the core six anyways. And just the way that this ended and the way that this rounded up, everyone's sorry. I just absolutely loved it. I bawled my eyes out at this. But then the like official last book is Some Kind of Perfect. But this one does follow more of their children. So like all of the core sixes kids, this book follows them. And I didn't really think that I would like it. But I think it was just because I was back in this world. Like I read this book maybe like eight months after I finished Long Way Down. So just getting back into this world and these characters and everything, I just loved it. So I did also give this one a five stars. So now that they are out of the way, we are going on to another series, which is the Akita series. Again, this is like a five, six unlimited star series for me, but these are the ones that I've rated five stars, which is basically the whole series apart from one. So a quick little overview on the Akita series. Mm, could this potentially contain spoilers? If you haven't read, just be, be careful. Well, basically, the Akita series is a fantasy book series that follows Feyre, who is a human, and she lives in, like, the human realm, but there is, like, a wall that separates the human realm from the fairy realm, and she essentially, in the first book, shoots a wolf, the wolf turns out to be a fairy, then she has to go and, like, pay her debts by living in the fairy realm so when she gets over there to this fairy realm she has to stay with the high lord of the spring court and there is kind of like this they call it the blight which is like affecting the magic and the lands and everything like that and you get more about that in the first book which is like literally the best part of the whole book like the under the mountain bit literally makes me die so I did rate the first book a five stars but now looking back after finishing the whole series I would still keep it as a five star but this one just does not compare to the rest of the books in the series like nowhere near. This is where we're kind of going to discuss spoilers not spoilers but like I'm going to be talking about the plot of obviously books past the first book and there could be potential spoilers so then we have Akamath which if you know me, you will know this book is literally imprinted on my heart and soul. I would die for this book. So again, we are in like the same world. We are following the same characters. We're still following Feyre and Tamlin, who is the High Lord from the Spring Court. We are following them and issues that they may be having. Then a certain other character that we've seen in the first book that Feyre makes a bargain with. We see him more in this book and we kind of get their relationship and it literally just killed me everyone will know chapter 54 and chapter 55 of this book even thinking of it is enough to make me want to die like in the best way possible but still then we have aqua a court of wings and ruin this one was where we kind of got more of the war the battle the politics that comes with a lot of fantasy books but i loved that i really enjoy politics in fantasy books anyway but just because of the world and the characters and the storyline, I ate this up. But basically this follows Feyre and like the core group in essentially battling because there is like a battle brewing, like quite literally a war that is going to happen. And we followed them throughout that and just everything to do with that. Like we get battle scenes, we get conflict. We get people that we think are going to potentially be hurt. Like it's a lot, but I loved it. She is a chunky one. And the last book in the series and the last one that I rated five stars is A Court of Silver Flames. So this follows Nesta, who is Feyre's sister. 
and it also follows Cassian who is one of the bat boys he is one of Rysan's best friends this was an emotional roller coaster I went from loving Nesta to hating Nesta to thinking that Cassian was too good for her to wanting them to be together forever and again like I just loved the whole sort of like politics and world building aspect of this book like this series in my eyes can do no wrong and I'm so excited to see what books come out in the future I just absolutely loved it okay and then we are finally on to the first standalone book which was happy place by emily henry this follows harriet and win who are well they were engaged like they were fiancés but basically they broke that off but then they end up fake dating well pretending to be fake engaged because they are going on holiday they've gone on a trip away with all of their friends they have like an interlinking friendship group and they don't want to tell them that they have split up that they are no longer engaged and together so they pretend to still be engaged and it's set in Maine at like a little summer holiday home everything about Emily Henry's writing is just so pumping to me so I loved that anyways like I love her writing style but then these characters and the storyline and sort of like the conflict between them really just did it for me like a big drop in this is miscommunication which I hate but I felt like their reasons were actually kind of valid and like the I don't want to say trauma but like the personal issues that both of the main characters go through I was just like you and me like I I just loved them I loved them together and you could tell that they really just were meant to be together and that everything was kind of just like a huge big misunderstanding that would have been sorted if they literally just talked about their feelings but I just absolutely loved this like I love the setting I love the characters I love the storyline I love their relationship everything about it was a 10 out of 10. Then I'm really sorry we are going back to another series we are going to the Magnolia Parks universe series so again this is like a five six star series for me but these are the two that I actually rated five stars. If you don't know the Magnolia Parks universe basically follows Magnolia and BJ who are like I don't even know what to call them they are an on and off again couple very toxic very back and forth all of the time it follows them two and their friendship group and then we get the daisy hates books which follow daisy and christian and a little bit of julian in there as well who is daisy's brother so first up we have magnolia parks a long way home which is the second magnolia parks book so in this book we basically see magnolia and bj trying to work through their shit and finally get their act together see if they can be together they are trying their best to try and be the person that the other one needs but like I said it's just so much back and forth like it is infuriating but so heartbreaking at the same time I feel like in this one we get a lot more emotional maturity from the characters and you are kind of like convinced that finally they're going to put the shit aside and they're finally going to get together and just work through it and actually commit to each other rather than being scared and running off and doing everything else but just telling each other that they love each other but of course with jessa hastings nothing is ever that simple and we get hit with the wildest most out of pocket ending to a book ever and it's just a lot then we have daisy hates two the great undoing which is the fourth book in the series this is the last one up to now there is obviously book number five the last magnolia parks book coming out in february which I literally cannot wait for but anyways going back to this so this follows Daisy and Christian Daisy is basically the sister of Julian who is he's a gang lord but I love him Julian hates is quite literally my one of my favorite book boyfriends ever in this world I love him and I will not take any slander and he should end up with me that's all but yeah this follows Daisy and Julian who are basically part of like a crime family but Daisy does not want to be a part of that she is out but that causes a lot of issues between her and her brother and her and Christian as well Christian is like her boyfriend her love interest that we see in the first Daisy Hates book so this one kind of goes through those issues in terms of like she does not want to be involved in crime he is also involved in crime so where does that leave their relationship but then we also get another storyline between Julian and Magnolia which quite literally tipped me off the edge. Um, I loved them together, even though like in my heart of hearts, I know that Magnolia and BJ are literally like written in the stars and meant to be together. I loved her and Julian, but I do think that's because I love 
Julian as a whole. Even talking about him is getting me a little bit flustered. But this book, there is just something about the way that Jessa Hastings writes. I am trying to go through and like retab and annotate and everything before the final book comes out. But yeah, her writing style is just like, oh, it is so, I wouldn't say intensely beautiful, that sounds a bit extreme, but like it is so like lyrical and honestly like nothing I've read before. It is just incredible the way that she writes. It's so like, oh, it literally gives me like goosebumps and butterflies and heart palpitations all in one. Like she is unmatched in my opinion. Then we have Powerless from the Chestnut Spring series. So I love the Chestnut Spring series, but this is actually the only book out of that whole series that I've rated a five stars. This is book number three in the series. So if you don't know, Chestnut Spring series is basically a cowboy romance type thing. It follows some brothers that have like a ranch, they are bull riders, etc. things like that. But this book actually follows the non-biological Eaton brother. This follows Jasper. So he basically was kind of like adopted into the Eaton family from a young age. He had quite a traumatic like upbringing and past. So it follows Jasper, who is actually a hockey player. And it also follows Sloane, who is actually the Eaton brothers cousin. So they have like grown up together. It's childhood friends to lovers, which I adore. He essentially swoops in and saves her from like a bad relationship. And they end up going on a road trip and all of like their past feelings come to a boil and yeah, but I just loved it. I love a childhood friends to lovers. I love like a slow burn angst type thing and this one really just hit the spot for me. Then we have perhaps one of the most traumatising books I've ever read but also one of the most beautifully written books ever which is A Little Life. So if you've not heard of this, this basically follows four friends living in New York. They meet in college, it follows their careers, their lives, everything like that for a very long time for it but it mainly centres around Jude. It focuses on his current life, his past, he is a very complex character so when it is following the four which are Malcolm, Jebby, Jude and Willem we get like little snippets of him and how he is seen through them they don't know much about him and then we start to get more of like his backstory what he has been through and everything like that and then when it is more up to date we see the struggles that he faces in like everyday relationships and it is just honestly it's horrendous like I won't lie one of the most traumatising triggering books ever because there is just so much going on. So it's a lot and I would definitely recommend reading the trigger warnings because everything you could possibly imagine is mentioned in this book. You think that it's going to get better and it just doesn't. So I would definitely prepare yourself before going into it. But just the way that this is written and the characters and the writing style and everything is just incredible. Like, yes, I cried for basically the whole duration of this book, but it's one that I'm going to think about literally for the rest of my life. And it felt so real to me. Like, it literally felt like I was looking through a window at the characters' lives rather than reading words on a page. And that is, like, something that doesn't happen all that often. And it was incredible, although slightly traumatising. Then the last one that I have is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So this is another fantasy book. It basically follows this magical kingdom where you have the elites and the ordinaries. So the elites have powers, the ordinaries don't. They are supposed to get rid of the ordinaries because they are meant to like kind of siphon their power. They basically make the elites less powerful if the ordinaries are around, apparently. But it follows our main character, Payden, who is an ordinary hiding in plain sight. And it also follows Kai, who is the prince of this kingdom. And he is essentially the enforcer, so he is supposed to get rid of the ordinaries. So every year, I think, they have basically purging trials, which are a little bit Hunger Games-esque, where they basically have to go through trials to essentially kill off other elites. It's supposed to kind of like showcase their power and I think kind of like cleanse from the less powerful ones, I don't know, so the most powerful ones only exist. I'm not actually 100% sure on why, but either way, they have these trials, she gets entered into them. But obviously she is an ordinary, nobody knows that. And she is fighting against all of these other people that have powers. So she is in there, Kai is in there, and we kind of get like a enemies to lovers relationship brewing between them. The tension, the angst, the slow burn, the actual hatred between them two left me giddy. Like I literally was giggling, kicking my feet, getting butterflies. Like I loved this so, so much. 
this is how an enemy slovers slow burn should be done and i'm pretty sure this is like her first book and i thought it was great it was amazing and i cannot wait for book number two coming out in the summer because the way it has ended I need the next one immediately. That is all of my five star reads of 2023. Absolutely love them. As you can tell, I'm most definitely a series girl. And the series that I read, the books that I read in 2023 are some of my all time favorites ever, ever, ever. And I'm very excited for the books that I'm gonna read in 2024. But please do stick around if you wanna see more of the book content, if you wanna see what I'm reading this year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hopefully I will see you in the next one.